Well, good afternoon to you from Los Cabos Airport down in Mexico. My journey today begins at check-in where I was able to drop my fairly heavy suitcase off before going through security. In Mexico, you have to fill in a questionnaire about COVID before you travel, even if your journey is entirely within Mexico, which is why I guess these desks are cluttering the domestic terminal. Anyway, the domestic terminal here is surprisingly nice. It's actually a giant tent of sorts, reminding me a bit of the main building at Denver Airport, only smaller, not so cold, and definitely a lot less weird. So the Priority Pass website suggested that this lounge was closed due to the COVID-19 pandemic, but the escalators up to it are still on and it is very much open. This is the VIP lounge here at Los Cabos Airport in the domestic terminal. This is a pretty standard priority pass lounge for this part of the world and is totally fine. I found it kind of sweet that their menu QR code takes you to their Instagram site. Still, it does the job. I only spent about 20 minutes in here, but when I got downstairs, wow, where did all these people come from? Unfortunately, our aircraft was an hour late on the inbound sector, so it looks like I'll have to wait down here for a bit. The reason for the mass of people becomes clear when not one, but two Volaris flights arrive. This is Volaris's A320neo, which has 186 seats. Our aircraft is the A321neo, which is a little longer, but comes with an eye-watering 230 seats, making it the most cramped A321neo I know of anywhere in the world. The earlier A321 CEO of Valaris has 220 seats, which is bad enough, but wow, 230 non-reclining seats on this thing. Okay. So immediately after being blanked by the crew, I find my seat, 38A, second from the back. By the way, I'd avoid the last row. There is no window in the window seat. My strategy of picking a seat near the back to get an empty middle did not work this time. It was packed, and this pip squeaking legroom is just about the worst I've ever experienced. 
Unsurprisingly, Volaris does not give a definite number on this, but I reckon that is 28 inches of pitch and I do not have long legs. You can tell it's a hot day, by the way. Any time you see an Airbus parked with its flaps slightly deployed, it tells you the temperature is over 30 degrees Celsius. So now you know. I was quite sad to say goodbye to Los Cabos. I spent a few days there and it's not hard to see why it is so popular as a holiday resort. We take off to the south, turn left to the east and blast up to 38,000 feet for our trip to Mexico City, which will take us one hour and 40 minutes to cover 731 miles. Budget airlines make a fair bit of money from buy on board sales and there's a slightly dog-eared menu in the seat back pocket. I thought the price is a little steeper than Viva Aerobus, which I flew a few days earlier, but before I absolutely spoil you with details of my onboard purchase, let's talk about the table. I am not as small as I was when I was 21, but look, I'm not huge. And wow, this table pokes me in the belly. It's horribly designed, and I'm sure this problem comes from the seat pitch. You see, this seat is probably designed to be 30 inches away from the one in front, not about 28 or so. And so, the table will dig into you. I just don't think I've ever experienced this exact problem on any of the dozens of budget airlines I've flown. Anyway, I was going to try another of Mexico's native beers, but it turns out that despite service beginning at the back, they did not have any beer left at all or any sparkling water, or Sprite, or even any coffee. I did get a Coke though. Hey, look, my seat neighbor, who's about three inches shorter and five waist inches skinnier than me, also has the table issue. I'm sorry, mate, it's not you, it's the airline cramming in 10 more seats when it really doesn't need to. The final issue, by the way, was that the table was not even flat, so be careful. Okay, let's talk fares. Of course, there are various types and bundles. There's basic, which is just you and a small personal item. Classic, which includes a carry-on. And plus, which comes with a bonkers two carry-on bags, a hold bag and priority boarding so you can spend the longest possible time on this cramped aircraft. Seat pricing is slightly odd. There are lots of weird prices, although this seems to be more a currency conversion issue from the peso to the dollar. But even though I have the most expensive ticket, I still have to pay to pick a seat. So, right, I picked down the back. It's the cheapest area, of course. By the way, you get randomly lower prices for aisle and middle seats in every part of the aircraft. You may be interested to know that taking a cat or dog in the cabin costs more than twice as much as the normal human passenger fare, and slightly less if you want to treat them to the spacious confines of the hold. Yet we call it the hold in British English, although thankfully Volaris did not have a totally garbled nationality list like Viva Aerobus did. There's no Wi-Fi, no in-flight entertainment, no in-seat power, no recline in the seats, and no fun either. The best bit about this aircraft is it goes 850 km an hour and Volaris does not fly long routes, so you won't be cooped up in here for too long. Also, every 15 minutes, this announcement played. This 230-seat aircraft has just two toilets, one at each end, so if you sit in the middle of the aircraft, you're supposed to just wait for it to be free. 
I don't know, you'd just never make it because those toilets were continuously occupied. Anyway, here's the outskirts of Mexico City, and thankfully our delayed flight made up a little time, and we were soon landing into Mexico City Airport. Now look, this is a no drama channel where I don't pick fights on purpose, but I do have to tell you how it is. There are lots of great low cost airlines, but Volaris is no bueno. It really is unbelievably and impossibly cramped on their brand new A321neo aircraft, and I recommend avoiding it if you can. If, like me, you have a bag, then the 116 US dollars one-way fare, including the seat selection, would be better spent on Aeromexico, which charges as little as $125 one way on this route, and that includes your bag. Oh, and it's just $166 for business class on this route too. Given all of that and the alternatives, no, I wouldn't fly Volaris again. Let me know if you've flown them and what you think, but for now, I'm enjoying some time in the USA where there's a stack of amazing content still to be filmed. I'll see you next time and thanks for following. Bye for now.